you're looking to buy a power station, you don't know exactly what you want, you don't even know exactly what your options are, but you know that Black Friday week is here, so now is the best time to buy. So today what I'm going to do is kind of give an overview, and a buyer's guide, the good, the bad, the ugly, what to get, what the options are. Now there are dozens of manufacturers and hundreds of models, so this is not going to be a review of every model out there. So you can see I have a sampling in front of me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a general sense of what's out there to help you decide what's going to work best for you. There are basically three different sizes, small, medium, large, and kind of an extra large. And inside of that, there are three categories, budget, premium, and DIY. Now there's also a junk category that I'll talk about in a little bit later too. So I'm going to explain all of this. We're going to dig into this. Stay tuned, hang out, let's have some fun. I'm going to start off with small power stations. These are lightweight, portable, very convenient. This is a great example of one. So with a small one, you know, you get a few hundred watts, maybe a few hundred watt hours of battery. They're really lightweight. They're very simple, very easy to use, very convenient. They're great for taking camping to the beach. You can get small ones that are even a little bit bigger than this, and they're great for tailgating or anything where you want to grab something and go if you want lightweight, easy, portable, and convenient. Next up is the mediums, or what I like to call the small room size. Now this is a really good example here. It ranges from 1500 watts to maybe 2500 watts of power. It has a battery size of a kilowatt, maybe two kilowatts, somewhere in there. Sometimes you can expand them to even a little bit more. They can run multiple devices. You can have them in a the kitchen. You can have them in your living room. They have what's called a UPS function. So you can have it in your den. You can have your computer hooked up to it. Have the unit hooked up to the grid. And if the grid went down temporarily for you know 10, 15 minutes, it would switch over automatically to run on the unit and would not interrupt your computer or anything that you were running on it. So they're really good for that. They're small enough and powerful enough that you can take them to a job site. They're really good for emergency temporary power. So they're really good at running most appliances or devices in a single room. Next up is the large and the extra large, or what I like to call essential home backup and whole home backup. This is a great example of essential home backup. It's powerful. It can do 3,600. Some of them can even do four or 5,000 watts of power. They have internal storage of 4,000 watt hours and more, then they can be expanded to 10 or even 15,000 kilowatts of battery power. And then on top of that are the whole home models. They're even more powerful than this. They can do 6,000 watts of power, sometimes even 12,000 watts of power, or even more. So as you can see, they're powerful and they're scalable. And essential home backup ones like this have a 30 amp receptacle that can do 120 volts that you can hook up to a critical loads panel they can run all of your important things in a power outage. And the extra large ones, the whole home ones, have 240 volt output. So they can easily run your entire house. So now let's talk about some of the drawbacks. And we'll start with the drawbacks of the smaller units. Well, to begin with, they're small. They have limited capacity for high wattage devices. And because they're so small, they can have small batteries in them and be limited in how you can charge them both to the grid and to solar. So while they're nice and portable, they do have some limitations. So now to some of the disadvantages of the single room models. They are less portable. They can weigh more. Some of them can weigh 50, 60 pounds. And they can't run every appliance. And even though they are bigger, they still have limited storage availability. Now to the disadvantages of the large and the extra large. To start with, they can be expensive, heavy, large. They're portable, but a lot of them are not really portable. And the bigger ones, the extra large ones, can be complex, confusing, require expensive professional installation. And even though these guys have big batteries in them, they still have limited capacity for long outages. So now let's talk about the differences between budget, premium, and DIY. And budget doesn't mean junk. Stay away, be leery of no-name brands out there. Most of those are junk. So then what's the difference between a budget model and a premium model? Well, it's very subjective, but this is how I break them down. I look at it more as listed versus not listed. For example, brands that I consider premium, like EcoFlow, Jackery, Blue Eddy, Anchor Solix, 
Most of their products are UL listed. There are a lot of very good budget models out there. For example, this Opus, where you got Fosbot, or you got Pecron. These are good budget brands, just a lot of their units are not UL listed. So it's very subjective. For example, this is an AFRI P310. I love this model. It's under $1,000, so it's clearly in the budget category as far as price, but the features, functionality, and the UL listing put it in the premium category for me. So it, you talk to 10 people, you're going to get 10 different answers, but that's how I separate premium versus budget. So now let's dig into this a little bit more and talk about the advantages of budget, premium, and DIY. The budgets tend to be more affordable and easy and simpler to use. The premiums just tend to be more reliable, have more features, do have that UL listing, which is really important on home storage systems, which I'll get into more in a little bit. And the DIY ones are expandable and customizable. You could literally build a DIY one exactly how you need. Say you had a small power need, you only needed a thousand watt inverter, but you needed a huge amount of storage. Well, you could build it exactly that way. If you wanted a huge amount of solar, but you never needed to plug it in, you could build it exactly that way. So DIY builds are extremely customizable and expandable. So now let's talk about some of the disadvantages. The disadvantage of the budget is they can be less reliable, have less features, have less performance, louder fans, less expandability, and lower and in inconsistent quality control. And they can be heavier, have not as good of charging, and can have less of a warranty. And the premiums are just more expensive. And both premium and budget have the same issue of single point of failure. As in if you get one and one thing fails inside of it, you gotta send the whole thing back. Now DIY disadvantage is, well, there's just a learning curve. You have to know how to build one. You have to have the tools, the wire, the knowledge, it takes some learning to build a DIY build. So now what do I use? Well, I am a DIY guy and I used to have an entire DIY setup, but I recently replaced it with this AFRI P310. I love it, it's incredibly powerful. It can run everything I need it to run. But because I'm a DIY guy, I have a bunch of DIY batteries. So I use those as the expansion batteries to make this have more stored energy. But if you're not a DIY guy, you could use the AFRI P310 and just get the expansion batteries. So it's a very, very powerful solution, and I'm very happy with my AFRI P310. So now let's talk about some of the things to look for when buying a portable power station solar generator. And the first two things to look for are the power and the capacity of the unit. You want to make sure you match that to your needs. If you have small power needs, something like this would be perfect. If you have large power needs, you're going to have to bump up to this, this, or even an extra large. And then same with battery storage. Do you just need a few hours of runtime, or are you looking something to run your entire house for days? So figure out what your needs are, then you can match the power and the capacity of the unit. That's a really good place to start. Next up is what is the efficiency of the unit? And what I mean by that is how efficiently does it take the stored battery energy and turn it into usable AC energy? the bare minimum, you want something that is 80% efficiency. And you really want to look for something more in the 85% efficiency. That's why I love the AFRI P310, because it is 94% efficient. So 94% of the stored battery energy is usable into AC power. So efficiency is really, really important to look for. Next up is charging. Does it do AC charging? Does it do solar charging? How fast does it charge? Can you do AC and solar together? And if you are looking for a portable power station solar generator, how good is that solar charging? Some brands, even some premium brands, and yes, Anchor Solix, you know I'm talking about you, limit the amount of solar you can do. So if you have a unit this size and it can only do 60 volts of solar in, that's really gonna limit what kind of solar panels you can use. So if you're getting a bigger model, make sure it can do at least 100 or 150 volts of solar in. So double check how well your portable power station solar generator does charging. Next up is check what kind of output ports it has and make sure those match your needs. Are you gonna be doing a lot of small devices? You're gonna be charging your phone or a drone or anything small that is USB or DC? Do you need a specific type of DC? Do you need a specific type of USB? Make sure the unit does that. 
And on the bigger ones, if you're going to be doing whole home output, make sure it can output that 30 amp. So make sure the output of the device matches what you are going to be doing with it. So something to look out for is does the unit do anything unusual? And yes, Jackery, I'm talking to you. Does the unit have something proprietary that will limit its, its compatibility with other units? The way you charge it, the way you plug in solar, just watch for that. If it has something unique or proprietary, it could limit how you use it. So think about how you're going to be using the device and what kind of features you're going to be looking for. You know, are you looking for a unit that has an app? Some people don't like apps. Are you looking for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? Some people love it. Some people hate it. Are you going to be hooking up your unit to a smart home panel? Do you need a touchscreen? Do you need that UPS function that we talked about? Are you going to be charging an EV or an RV? Do you need auto start integration with a gas generator? Just think about all of the ways you're going to be actually using your portable power station and find a unit that has the features that match those needs. I'm going to jump back to UL listing again. Now, I know I talked about this briefly before, and I don't want to get too far into this because it's a whole video onto itself, but it's very important if you're going to be doing a large or especially an extra large, one of those whole home storage solutions. And that's because there are UL listing requirements in a lot of places. There are code requirements in a lot of places. So in general, just do your research and make sure if you are doing a permanent or semi-permanent whole home solution that you're in compliance with all of your local and state regulations and talk to your insurance company to make sure you're not going to run into any issues. Do it up front now before you have any problems, especially if you're doing a DIY build. A DIY home storage solution may not be UL listed and may not be in compliance. So again, double check before you do anything to make sure you don't run into any unforeseen issues. So the final thing is what is the reputation of the brand and the unit? Do not buy junk from a no-name company. Make sure it's a quality company, quality device with a good warranty from a solid company that has a good reputation. So do your research on whatever you're going to buy. Not all portable power stations are the same. Not all companies are the same. So make sure you're buying the best unit that you can afford. So my friends, now is the time to buy. You can see I have this assortment of products and I'll list things below that I've used, that I've reviewed, that I recommend. But you want to buy something now. We got tariffs coming potentially, the 30% tax credit, which you could get for some qualified equipment that's up here. That's ending at the end of the year. Our power grid is just so problematic nowadays. And it's Black Friday week. Now is the perfect time to buy. And this is the future. I mean, personally, I think that in the next few years, everybody is going to have a portable power station to kind of buffer the grid. So make sure you go out and get a good portable power station solar generator today. Now is the best time. If anybody has any questions about anything that you've seen, if there's a different brand that you like or a different model that you like, love to hear your story please leave a comment below. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to everyone soon.